good morning, and uh, it's really nice to see Force United just grow and build a better and bigger conference every year. Uh, and thanks to you all for coming all the way to Audi too. So uh, yeah, so I have a lot of slides, so I'll just get started quickly. Uh, I'm Rishab. I work. I've been working at this course for about five years, and uh, this. So I'm. I'm here to talk to you today about what's been happening at this course for the last year or two. But also, but but it's not just like a list of features. It's also with some takeaways for people who are new to this course, but also people who are running this course instances today. So, in the interest of anyone who doesn't know what this course is in the audience. We started in 2013. It was built in Ruby on Rails and Ember.js. The, in the community platform area, some of the differentiators are that you know, Discourse is open source. It always has been, and it will always be open source. Even if you host with us, host your community with us, or self-host it, it will. You can always, you always own your data, so the data is truly portable and. And it's weird to say it out loud, but yeah, unlimited conversation history is a weird thing in like chat apps, so I still have to like bring it up. So, and while there are tens of thousands of discourses out there, we, our business model is to support services around it, if you want. So we have 3,000 plus hosted customers on our infrastructure. Um, we are a team of 96 people across 23 different countries and 15 different time zones, and we, Use discourse to coordinate asynchronously and build this company, and that's been the question. That's been the st the state for since the first day, and this full group of people just aims to make the internet a better place for discussion. And even at India Force, off the top of my head, I can think of some discourses. The Frappe forums have always been on discourse before I even started working here, which is very cool. The Internet Freedom Foundation forums, the Zerodha. Q&A forum, so there's a lot. And now thinking about it, I forgot to add the Force United forums. So they also use discourse. So while we've been around for so long, we I'm here to iterate that discourse is still a very dynamic application. And it's currently moving faster. I think it's moving faster than ever in terms of things we've added in the last year or two. And why is that? So we. We changed our release cadence. So in the past, it would be that we would have a release after four months, after 13 months, and it was a bit random. But now we're, we're trying this new cycle where we have six months, releases every six months. So in Jan 2023, we had Discourse 3.0. In, in August, we had 3.1. And in, I can't think of any reason why there wouldn't be a 3.2 in January 24. So this is helping us focus what to prioritize each release, but also make things predictable for people using discourse and upgrading every time we ask them to. Uh, so jumping into some of the problems we tried to solve in the last year or two. So discourse has some strengths, right? That for asynchronous discussions, you have a record of everything that happened, any decision. You can go back and say that, OK, five years ago, why was this decision made? And as Ria said in the opening note, you know, the active archive, I liked that sound. So, but then for some, in some places there are weaknesses. It's not, it wasn't a complete community platform because you didn't have space for casual conversation that brings people together and that's why we have chat apps. So for years we recommended that you, you have a discourse and you have a chat app and you integrate them so you have the best of both worlds. So, but then it, it, it has challenges like you have to educate people. Okay, if, if it's in chat, you put it there and if it's something more, important and longer you put it in this course. So uh, over the last two years, we started iterating with some exp experiments. And we realized that did this solution need to be external at all? Like, why do we have to integrate? So we uh, last year, we launched something called Discourse Chat. And so if you look at the sidebar on the left, you have access to things like categories and tags and messages that we're used to in this course. But you also have channels and personal chats. So discourse chat is a part of discourse core. And it's a very good chat experience with threads and everything you would expect in a chat setting. But 
this has started to work really well because it gives the community cohesiveness that you don't have to go to three different URLs to uh, just talk to their members. So it brings everything under one roof. And yeah, we had this slogan like chat inside discourse, discourse inside chat. So we still want to focus on the parts that discourse does well. So there are a lot of features that focus on this flow. So if you start a conversation in chat and you select and then you realize, oh wait, this needs to be in a topic because we're starting a project out of it. You can select those messages and then just quote it in a new topic and done. So over the next year, we are also focusing on this connection between sync and async and how, what that means for a community. So we brought it in one place and now we're bringing both communication styles and checking, like improving how they flow with each other. And as of today, we have some sites that send up to 30,000 chat messages a week. So it's still like we're rolling it out slowly, but people, anyone here is free to try it. On our internal discourse of just 96 people, we send 15,000 messages a week. I haven't heard of anyone say that, oh, let's bring back that external platform which had the other side. So it's really, it's been really cohesive and there are hundreds of sites that use it lightly. So there's some light activity. So now all of these people get some value out of this. So the first takeaway is that if you have a new discourse or if you have an existing one, try enabling chat. Think about who would benefit from having it the most and try it with a staff or a high trust group. Like if moderators need a place to discuss, have fast paced conversations with each other. Uh, the second problem area is just about accessing what we care about most. So we added this sidebar to discourse and I think most, most people who use discourses here, I, I check the sites and they have sidebar enabled. So I just wanted to point out two features where you have custom user sections in your sidebar now. So as a product manager of the internal tooling team, I need access to this stuff every day. So I placed that here and by clicking the pencil, you can change that. But by clicking the plus icon, that's my next takeaway. You can add a custom section for everyone on your site. So, you know, what do you want people on your site to see every day? Like it could be a link to a filtered list of pull requests that you guys need to look at often. It could be your quarterly objectives. You know, it's front and center for everyone. So what do members need access to? And let's just add a global section. The third thing is we built an, we built an experimental discourse AI plugin and I say experimental because it's completely separate from Discourse Core and it's a plugin that you install and then in that plugin there are seven, seven different modules that do seven different things at the moment. But even inside those modules you can choose what provider you would like to use. So you don't have to enable the whole thing as a bundle, you can just pick one thing if you try. So you can try open source models, you can, so yeah, so this is an initial list and what the focus right now is just to the focus right now is just to you know, find places in the app where yeah, I can make things better. So my favorite one is, so when you finish reading a discourse topic at the bottom, you have this related topic section. Now, if you install the plugin, but this has really surprised me. I was pretty neutral on it in the past, but when you're reading a topic, it suggests you things that you should read depending on the content and the title, and it's not just basic keyword matching, it's, act and it's, it's a semantic textual search. So this, has, this is my favorite one that's working right now, but we have other things like we have this bot that can help support your users. If staff isn't around, you can ask it questions. It has seven different themes. So help with the forum, help you write SQL queries. So they've been exposed to different areas of data and you can try them depending on what you wanna do. One thing different about using it in discourse would be that you can have a group conversation with them. Like you can have five or six people talking to the bot. So that's something different. And this is an experiment. We're seeing how it can add more and more value over time. Summaries. So if you have a topic with thousands of posts and you want a quick summary, you click that button and you have a summary in a couple of seconds. Proofreading your text. So we're just, these are different areas of the app where we're, considered, where we're seeing if it adds value. So the third takeaway here is try a couple of these AI features. Related topics is easy to start with, but it's also possible to self-host if, if you 
want to try that. Uh, a side announcement is that we now have a, so thanks to Angus McLeod from your community, we have a com plugin for activity pub and discourse. So this was often requested by open source users, but how it works right now is you can select a category in discourse and publish it to an activities pub stream and it just broadcasts posts in this one way direction. But it's good that we made some progress here and then in the next few months, this is a, an update from the team that we will work on improving the performance UI, but most importantly, allow discourse to follow external activity pub streams and actors. So what that means is you could have a public discourse and a private discourse, but they could have a shared category. You could import posts from an activity pub stream into a category on your discourse. So this is exciting. And yeah, we're, so this is what's coming up in the next few months. Uh, so yeah, summary is that try chat, utilize the sidebar, try some of the AI modules, share feedback with us on meta.discourse.org. If you're using discourse, reach out to me. Read the 3.0 and 3.1 blog posts. And I'm saying please because I spent weeks writing them. So someone should read it. So uh, yeah, and just what's coming next as per January 24, discourse 3.2. So as I said, six months release cycles now. So in this cycle, we're focusing on the AI team, improving chat, listening to a lot of user feedback. For that, migrations tooling, modernizing our JavaScript code base, our Ruby and platform like themes, theme components, and finally the staff experience team. And the staff, so discourse often gets feedback like it's a, like you need to be a little bit technical to set it up. And you know, we don't want that to be the case. That you don't need to be a developer to feel comfortable configuring something in the UI. So the staff experience team is taking a look at simplifying all of this. So that's exciting. So you can expect improvements, significant improvements in all of these areas in a few months. And yeah, that's about it. I'm around all weekend if anyone wants help setting up this course on their development installs, self-host, free trial on our website. We don't ask for credit card information anymore. And I spoke about a lot of things quite fast. So that last link, rishabh.cc slash if3 has links to everything that, it's a blog post with links to everything that I mentioned today. So you can refer to that anytime and come find me if you have any questions. That's it. Do we, do we want, do we have time for questions? Okay, are there any questions? Hmm. No? Okay, yeah. Yeah, uh, so, we don't have a way of knowing for sure because we, we check for versions. So we know that someone is self-hosting on this version, that's it. But if someone turns that off, we don't. But I think 20, 30,000 is the number I last heard of known sites. And we host about 3,000 on our infrastructure as, as, the, as a hosting company. So yeah, there's a lot of them out there. I have one question. Yeah. So I never use the discourse, but uh, we use the Slack in our organization. Yeah. And I find it very similar. So mm. um, what's the basic difference between Slack and discourse? Yeah. So yeah, the screenshot I showed you will make you think that way. But actually, this is just one side of discourse. This is just the chat side we added. But the site we usually are used to seeing, side we usually are used to seeing is not this. It's actually a community forum where you speak asynchronously. So you have long, you write in long form. You have like, you write paragraphs. So if you check out the Force United uh, discourse, you will see that there are huge discussions about like lengthy topics. So now what we've done is we've added this Slack-like chat part to bring it under the same website. So people don't have to have both of these because you can't have, it's difficult to have asynchronous, big decisions type discussions in chat applications, finding them, and you know, just, yeah, so we are trying to bring both into one. But this is just the chat side. I can show you uh, the other side after this, yeah. Yeah. Um, so why bring chat into a forum-based software, right? I mean, right. I've been using PHP BB since mm -hmm. like 2005, I guess. Yeah. So uh, why the change? So first thing is that when you set up a new discourse, it's entirely optional. Like you can toggle it on and off. Like, do you want chat? Yes, no. So that's, it's a choice. It's not, we're not giving it to everyone. Uh, 
I think we realized ourselves, like as I said, we've always used this course to build, so and a lot build the software over the last 10 years. So we realized this need for ourselves that we want, we want to get rid of that. What, could we get rid of that other app we use as a team? And we realized that you know it's 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 pretty good. It gives us value, and that's often been the way we build things. But now we're seeing a lot of people use it, so we're we're getting more encouragement to keep building it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Thank you.